The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the last day of September, September the 30th, and we're asking some, uh, let's put it this way, portfolio management over here, big drop, some early buyers. We'll look at this closer as we move along. Meantime, let me just tell you, well, first of all, two hours of Steve Rhodes. Thank you very much. Great, A great introduction to the day, of course. And I'm followed by uh, Larry Pesavento. Larry's followed by Daryl Martin. Daryl's followed by Dave White. Dave is followed by, whoops, we've got an hour that's a repeat. And then we've got Tom O'Brien, 4 o'clock till 6, wrapping up the, the entire session, looking ahead, looking behind, looking at every little niche, and giving you a great uh, analysis of, of uh, based on his techniques. So we've got a full house here. Well, let's go straight to our stories. Dow's down, was down 150-something. Dow's down 94 at 15,163. The S&P is down 8, was down 15, it's at 1680, uh, 1683. The comp index is down 9 at 3,772. Gold is down now only 4. It was down a little bit more earlier. It was actually up a tad last night and it came back down. It's at 13.35. Uh, we've got silver down. Oh, silver's up 10 cents at 21.93. Platinum is down uh, 5.3 at 14.15. High grade copper stuck in the 3.30 area. 333 actually. Uh, crude oil is down a dollar at 101.72. Bonds are down 930 seconds. And what are we looking at here? And the dollar is down 10 cents. So just a, re a quick review. Then we'll go to our callers waiting online already. Um, <clears throat> we've got. So I just wanted to show you the Dow. The Dow, there has to be an alternate count. That alternate count has to be an unresolved peak G. Why? Because it never did break 14,551, the low of June. Went to a peak F at 15,658 on the 20, on the 2nd of August. Pulled back to the 14,000, uh, what was it, 7, uh, 760 level. That was on the uh, 27th of August. Let me just type that in so I've got it there as a fact. 8, 27. Then rebounded up to uh, 15,709, and that was on the 18th of September, 9, 18, 13, and it's now pulled back more than 50%. The low today actually is 15,086. So as it's holding the 15,000 level, I think is there's a bit of a cushion here, but I'm a little suspicious because there are just so many areas that really do need to be resolved with a consolidation taking place, a consolidation in my terms means that it goes into a minimum a trading range with lower highs and lower lows, but that could be contained. Worst cases, it gives back a huge chunk of the gains that it's made, whatever index it is, going back to the uh, June lows, breaking the um, August lows, going back to the June lows. So now let's just cover this quickly because the resistance is at 15,000, about 230, but 15,308 is in fact the nine period expansion moving average resistance. But the weekly chart, and there's something spectacular happens this week. This could very well be that double cup formation that I often talk about. And in fact, uh, so far, it's held a very important up trend, I'm not calling it a channel, it's an uptrend um, support level, and it's in the inside buy zone, so it'll break that if at any point this week uh, you start to see a close under 14,956, that'll say be careful, there could be a complete give back of that, that, that gain uh, from um, the June low of 14,777 all the way up to the 15,700 level, so that's uh, 14, yeah. Uh, that's a, in fact, a thousand point move. Hey, it's not a big deal these days, a thousand points. Uh, we haven't had much, much in the way of pullbacks in time. Now, the other thing that I'm talking about is September closes. We start October tomorrow. If in October, the entire month of October, the Dow does not go above 15,709.58. I say 0.58 because in my technique, it is so precise. When you're talking about peaks and troughs, that one penny above will extend leg D. One penny below 
gives you a peak D for the entire month of October. We've got a whole month to go before we will know whether we've got a peak D or leg D continues. Let's go to our first caller. We've got Ben in Tallahassee. Hi, Ben. How are you? Excellent, Basil. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Great. I just um, added to uh, uh, BIS this morning. I was hoping uh, you could do an assessment on, uh, on the uh, daily and, and weekly Okay, folks, we're looking at, for, for my subscribers, we are, in fact, in the 200% short position of the IBB. So let's look. If you don't mind, Ben, I'm going straight to the IBB, which has acted Absolutely. really well today. Yeah, the, the most important factor, and this is what I'm, I'm trying to, you know, the last move we had on the, on the IBB, we got almost to the penny for the downside. Didn't take our profit, profits quick enough. We took some profits, but not enough. This time, we've got it, and it was almost the same sort of thing to the, to the recent high. But this is the first area, when I was giving my talk the other day at the, uh, investors, the Boston Investors Group, I was saying that uh, one of the first sectors that my fund managers will uh, run to if there's any hesitancy, is the, the sector that's been the best and treated them the best. So it's the one that has the quickest reflex to the upside. But if you look deeper, you'll see that the IBB, which is the iShares NASDAQ Biotechnology ETF, in the, in the monthly chart, you can call that extended, but at any point you could have called it extended, except for one little thing. You are starting to see that in the monthly chart, this leg F slash B, is um, in an area that says the MACD, the moving average, folks, if you're looking at the, my charts, you'll see the one on the right, the one that I, you'll see the pointer moving around. The MACD is still very strong. The uh, relative strength is starting to make lower highs, but it hasn't really failed. The on-balance balance volume, let me just get the numbers here. On-balance volume is... Um, Oh boy, one two one nine eight. Who well, are too many numbers? Uh, one two. Uh, let's call it twelve nineteen eight. So the next one is. So now it's minus thirteen, and the next one is twelve twenty five minus. So what we're looking at is a slightly lower high in the month of uh, July, and now it's still lower. The price has gone higher. The MACD is very positive. The stochastic at 91% is very positive, but it's been there for a very long time, even though it dipped once in 2011. And it says that it's getting to a point where it should start to pull back. This is between you and me because the IBB itself hasn't actually heard, <laughs> heard me talking about it. However, if you look at the the weekly chart, this is where a lot of information is being imparted. There is a chance, and that's what I mentioned this morning when I showed my chart uh, to, uh, to subscribers. I said that the high that was made at 212.50 um, a couple of weeks ago, all you need to get is 212.51, and you've started leg D. At this point, you've got... Uh, you've got a parallel wave count of G slash C. So that means let's look at the internals, and the internals say the relative strength is way lower than it was back when it made a peak A top. Well, it could be an E, but let's call it an A for now. Uh, the week of uh, the 17th of May of 2013 at 186.98. The MACD has made a, an M formation, and it's a little... it's. We won't know because the week has only just started and it's a little bit distorted. But it is in the area, and the, the stochastic is in the area of 96.19%. The previous high was 96.69, so it's a little bit lower. And the MACD itself is climbing, the red line is climbing, but the green line is almost about to turn. So I can't do anything about the weekly until Friday at 4 o'clock, but what I can say is that what I call the rudder, the rudder is the daily chart in this particular instance, of course I could go to the 120 minute chart, um, that's made a double top and we're going to have to see if it's able to climb above 211.78 because the previous high was 211.78 um, 
21250. So that's failed so far, and the technicals are also lower. So here's the analysis. The day is young. We've seen exactly the kind of action that you would anticipate from fund managers who have been long the um, NASDAQ. It doesn't have to really be the NASDAQ. It could be, let me just grab the BBH. I don't know if I've updated that. The BBH is the regular biotech, the S&P. Yep, that's made an E, peak E. Uh, top. This is actually underneath it by a little bit more. Yeah, I get the same thing. Uh, I obviously um, am trying to time this almost perfectly. Uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do. That's the way the Chapman Wave methodology can work. So what I want to see by the end of the day is that the IBB does not take out I'd love to see it not take out today's high of 211.16, but not to, definitely not to take out 211.78. If it does that, I just have to anticipate if there's any positive sign tomorrow, <laughs> overnight that is, you know, some kind of resolution. I don't see how they're going to get a resolution that quickly, but if they do, then we could see the futures gap up tomorrow, 12 points or something. So there's that risk. I suspect we aren't actually going to see it this time. Too many people are talking about that. Maybe there's just a neutral day after the end, uh, the close today. So everything about the daily chart right now is saying, yeah, price is holding well. But on every move, certainly the daily chart lately, there's been weaker technicals. So all I'm able to do is to try to anticipate that we are in the right position, the price of the of the the BIS, which is what we're using, will determine whether or not that's going to work. But most importantly, there was a spike today that did not take out the previous high in the BIS of 26.42. The high today was 26.31. So what I need to be prepared for is either there's going to be another arch formation like this here. And it takes out the low of 24.99. I think that was a low. Let me just double check. 24.99. Yep, that was a low on the 19th. We're looking at the, the, the BIS is the symbol. Pro shares, ultra short, NASDAQ, biotech. Now, I've been very strict about this, the latest position. And that's the one that's, that's, uh, that has to be monitored closely. The other one I've given a little bit of room to. And I've given a little bit of room, and I'll explain why. In the pattern that I'm looking at in my uh, CD introducing the Chapman Wave, Chapman Wave methodology, what I, I normally look for is that there is a pattern I look for that's the double top pattern. When you're getting to the double top formation, I'm going to draw vertical lines here, and I'll explain exactly what I'd be looking for. There goes the, uh, the music as a hint that we're about to wrap up this segment. I'll do a little bit of work on this particular uh, instrument as we're looking at it, and I'll explain why I'm looking at it as I am, and what I'm anticipating is a possibility. So, Ben, hold on, and you know that we've got stops in place, but it's worth going yep. through the yep. machinations of Sounds the whole good. thing. I'll be right Great. back Thanks, with Ben in Tallahassee. Dow's down 114. S&P's down 10.5. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We are back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Conditions, and we're looking at the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, the, these are the uh, iShares of the NASDAQ Biotech uh, Sector ETF. And what we're looking at here is that there's one cup formation. Now, there could quite easily be another cup formation. It happens sometimes that you get the double cup. We were looking at just now. But more importantly, it is how well a sector is doing in relation to uh, all the other sectors. And there's absolutely no question. This is the sector that has been on fire. It is the sector that has done absolutely stupendously just fabulously and uh to be trying to short it uh, takes a little bit of gumption chutzpah is the word but in fact there are signs here that are that are saying now they're starting to get quite heavy there's a high level consolidation occurring the peak uh that was made on the i think it was the 17th on the 19th Yep, the 19th of September, 212.50, has seen quite a drop in the technicals. And the stochastic now is 71%, and the price keeps trying to go higher, but it keeps hitting a barrier. But a barrier means absolutely nothing, as we've seen with, say, a Tesla. And a Tesla is still climbing. It's up 214 today at 193.04, getting into that channel that is resistance. So... When, a, when something is favored, in this particular case, if you look at BIB, BIIB, 
made a peak F top struggling. You look at uh, REGN, I think it's making a new high today. Yep, making a new high. Now, this one did the cup formation and broke right out. But look at the technicals. The MACD never crossed negative. The stochastic did drop sharply, but has rebound very quickly back to the 79 level. It is in leg, what is this? It's in leg E in the weekly. So, and it's in leg E in the monthly. I, is there a round number high today? 319.83. I'll be looking for some round numbers here. So, this is one of the best ones there. If you look at Amgen, so we'll do, uh, Ben, we'll just look at some of them individually. Amgen has made, it's probably a G, yep, I'm going to have to call that a G top because it was a C slash G, but it continued a little higher than the previous high. I'm calling this a G. So this made a G top in the daily. The weekly has gone to a D, and it is consolidating and not breaking down. I'm calling it consolidating. So I'm looking at these different stocks, and I'm saying, okay, go one by one. And when I go one by one, it says that, there are just a few. This is this is like on my CD when I say I talk about the rogue wave, and that sometimes the the wave doesn't actually see the sign of the beach that says high tide at noon, and then at 12:06 there's this one wave that splashes everybody. But when you look around, you wipe your eyes and you look around, the wave is gone. In fact, the tide is receding, and this is what I'm suspecting yeah, that this particular sector it's a fantastic sector, but I think it needs a timeout. So that I'm doing that on a can I call it a fundamental level? No, because all my work is based on the technicals. I, I spoke to someone just recently who's really an expert in the whole biotech industry. He said, wow, they are looking better and better. And I said, I, I think they're getting a little bit toppy. And he said, toppy? <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said to myself, whoa, that was a hey, good sign. <laughs> yeah, Basil, I just wanted to uh, interject here on, um, I, you know, I, and I'm willing to hold off, you know, on, or hold, hold out for, for a while yet. I was just, Looking, even if it's another month or six weeks, um, even if you know, willing to, to to give it a little bit more on the upside, but but longer term, you know, it's again four to six weeks out. If if it's got potential for fifteen or twenty percent, I'll take it. Yeah, you see, I'm looking at this as a four to six week position. That right. I, I know, I, I should I must make that clear. The position, you know, that I keep really tight stops because I know we can always jump back in. I I don't I don't want I being being a, a, a double short, I, I think you've got to be very strict. But I'm prepared to come back again and because I know that when we succeed, it just more than makes up for the little tiny losses. I don't want you to hold on saying there's a really good chance that it, because what happens if leg D starts in the weekly of, of the um, iShares? This is the NASDAQ Biotech, uh, B IBB is the symbol, trading at 210.68, dropped three points and get, came right back again and went to a plus. What if it goes in leg D and leg D goes to, say, 214? That's just only four points, but if you're in the wrong position... In a double, that's I, I don't want that. You can always come back when we've got a decisive trend change. So yeah, let's and be I, and I, don't get me wrong. I'll definitely have a stop in. I think, okay, good. Yeah, no, I always have stops, and that, no, I learned that uh, the hard way. A long time ago, we all did. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> now we can laugh about it, but boy, at the time, you can yeah. sit there in the wrong position, and it really hurts. So okay, Ben. So we're looking at this. You know our position. I'm prepared to see today or tomorrow. By when? I tell you right now. If on Wednesday, this is under 207, instead of above 213, I believe we have the right idea. So let's look at it closely. Thanks so much for calling. Hope that was a little clarification. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. 
Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman and the Tiger Technicians. Oh, I got a, a call here from Rich in Orlando. Hi, Rich. How are you? Good, good Basil. And yourself? Very well. Thank you. Good. A couple of days ago, we were talking about the ERY and the energy sector. Correct. You had mentioned the discussion that we left was that you thought that when it would break, if it would break big one way or the other. Well, it did look like it broke today down, which is for the ERY. That's what I was hoping for, looking for. And that, that's what you've, you've still got your, ER, you got your ERY, right? Correct, correct. Yes. And the because real if, question that I have is that, is it, is, does it look like there's any real legs to this kind of a break to the downside, or is it just... It's kind of a fly, you know, a fly. No, no, a very good question. Garrett, let's just do a couple of things just to, to review for folks. I'm looking at the XLE, which is the root position of the S&P Select Energy Spider Fund. Rich had the ERY. And what I said to him was, as I was looking at it, I believe that he was in the correct position, but I wanted to just warn him that if there was a slide in the ERY, below, I think it was the low of 24.26, that was yes. the low of the 24th of September, then he had to be a little bit careful in that position, maybe take a little bit off, number one. Number two is, now, as I recall, I thought I said that if it broke above 25.10,
that would be the sign that you'd be looking for because it would probably mean that the XLE has broken its support of uh, 83.37. So now you're in the position. Now your question is a very good question. In this kind of a market with energy, is energy really related to the general stock market as we look at it? And then we had looked at a, a number of different stocks like Exxon. And what I had said was Exxon looked weak. Uh, there was just one, I think it was COP that looked better. Yep, and COP had made the peak E, which I believe now I have to call the peak E top with a down arrow. And I mean, I've even got the CVX printed up here by mistake. It's a CVX. No, I've, I think that you're in a really good position. There could be a little bit of a bounce, but this is what I'm looking at here. Let me just go back to the XLE. If uh, Now, we're always in a situation like this because historically we don't have that much to go on. It's either what, uh, I think 1993 or something, 95 was it, was the last um, uh, um, conflagration between the, the, the two parties looking at uh, uh, the closure of government. So I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm saying everything about it says this does look like a, what I call a propeller shaft. Let me just draw that in right here. I've drawn part of it. A, pro a propeller shaft, and in this case, it's, it's really like an A to B equals C to D. So that would be uh, 85.74. Let me just hit, type that in, 85.74. Um, and right here, we've got 83.37. 80, 80, 83.37. And then we've got 84. What is that? 80. 8450, 8433, let me type that one in. And then what I'll explain to you is what I look at, it's a pattern that I, this goes back for me, oh, years and years I've been using when I used to hand draw these charts. It says now you've got a two and a, two and a half point, two and a quarter point move from the top to the bottom, so there could be a two and a half point move-ish from the, for, that would take you down to the 80 level. Well, right now the XLE is at, um, 82.39, so the level I look for on the left side would be the trough of the 30th of August where it made a little bit of a low at 81.37. So that the MACD is looking very poor, the stochastic is still declining, the on-balance volume says I'm getting to a level where I might bounce, but you do need the stochastic to, to, to really give you that bounce as, as a confirmation. And if you remember when I looked out at the weekly ch chart, I said that nine-period moving average is going to be really important, and that's about where we are right now, 82.76, because no matter how I counted uh, this particular chart formation, I keep coming out to um, that this is a peak C. It doesn't tell you how long you could stay there, but it does say that if there was a move below 79.83, it would start to change this pattern quite considerably, and the monthly chart is in leg F. So when I put the whole thing together, it said, as I, as I mentioned to you, looks to me like there's some limited upside, but you need to see in the XLE that that level of support is taken out, and that's been done today. So now what do you do in terms of your ERY, which is, uh, I think it's, this is 200% long, right? Three, uh, three, 300, you're right. No, and that was my concern, only that it was 300% long and the moves could be pretty quick and pretty big as we saw on Friday. Yeah. It closed at 24.97 uh, and today it hit a high of 25.96 and right now it's up 2.64%, which is much more than the XLE is down. So here's my thinking. I believe you're in the right position, but for confirmation... I have to give it two days, not just tomorrow, but all the way into Wednesday. And by Wednesday, it mustn't break 2490, because that'll say, uh-oh, XLE is starting to find some strength. It doesn't mean that you need to get out of that position. It just means that I would say to you that part of your position, re re understanding that tonight something could happen, and tomorrow morning the futures, hey, they could be up, we don't know. They could be down, we don't know. This is a mystery. I just want you to be able to protect some of that position. So if this is leg B and it really is a buy signal going to a buy mode and I don't have that yet because I'd need to see the ERY, 
Uh, let me give you the exact title, folks. It's the Energy Bear three time shares. I need to see the stochastic up in the 80% level. It's only a 55%. That says mm -hmm. this is very early. If it's going to work, it's going to take a little time and price to get this stochastic higher. So you've got a really nice gain. There's, there are two ways of doing this. If you have enough to take a little bit off right here and say, I'm rewarding myself. That's, that's one way to do it, and with the 300%, I'm learning that with the 300%ers, that's really a very good way to do it. We gave up a lot of gains in our last one that we had huge gains because I waited a little too long. So I'm going to recommend, think about it, you don't have to do it right away, but maybe you want to take a little bit off, keep the rest, and then you're going to watch the 24 95 to 2490 area as support. You want to see the XLE break down, and you want to see the ERY take out the 2653 high of the 6th of September. If it does that, I believe that you're going to be looking to a peak A, peak B, a peak C, and a peak D in this particular sector. Um, and that would be in the inverse of the XLE, which is the energy shares. So I hope that helps you. Thank you very much. It does. I appreciate it. Congratulations for holding your position. And as I say, don't just jump into what I'm saying. Think it through. If you think it's worthwhile taking something off, if you've got enough to do that, you still feel comfortable, or just taking a little bit to reward yourself, or just saying, you know what, I'd rather make my stop at a certain position, hey, that's fine. But great, great, uh, great trade. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You for, thank you for calling, Rich. Let's go to Brian and Jackson. Hi, Brian. How are you? Uh, hey, Basil. Thanks a lot. Uh, I talked to you one day last week about Apple. Right. The 450 Octobers and the 425 Novembers. Yes. And, uh, and you told me to call back for to check on the progress. Okay. Now, the difficulty with checking with the progress today is that we have no idea. Tomorrow could be either a huge move up, another move down. This time it will be sustained if there's a lot of negativity. Or you could just have another waiting session uh, like we're doing right now. We're kind of in this waiting session. So let's look right. at Apple. Basically, you're looking for Apple to slide. You needed to slide decisively under the 470, 466 area. What was that low? Four, yeah, 466, round number low. You need that to happen. It needs to happen fairly soon. Right now, Apple is at 479. AAPL is a symbol. It's trading it down $3.40. It's coming back from an earlier decline this morning of 474. Now, if we were holding at the 474 level and you got this little midday rally attempt and then nervousness and a sudden swoon between 2 o'clock and 320, then Apple, I suspect, would be making lower lows. So now we've got to be real careful with this. Why? Because the Apple chart is saying both in the daily Remember that resistance level that I was looking at was, I think, 495-ish or something? Right now, that level is at 492. And for Apple to jump, 8 bucks is very easy. For these days, for it to decline, 8 bucks is also very easy. For it to actually do much more, it's going to need the stochastic, which is at 61%, to start rallying into the 72 percentage area and the MACD which is just barely positive to really strengthen so it's on the cusp in both areas now this is the difficulty so yeah this is this is I'm only going okay. to tell you what to look for okay whereby, you? whereby you're going to have to be a little bit careful for instance okay. this is the this is where, for you let's imagine the worst case scenario Apple closes at its high today it opened at 477 the high is 481 it's at 479 it closes at 485 okay now you're looking in and say uh oh I've just lost a fabulous down move because Apple refused to close down 10 points in fact it's up on the day so here's number one now all of a sudden the scenario changes and tomorrow you got somebody you got these guys saying okay we've come to some kind of an agreement even if on Wednesday that agreement fails tomorrow could turn out to be a much bigger session than you would like so the level to start really moderating and I'm not sure how you would do this because you're in the longer-term Apple uh, puts 
and you might want to be thinking about tomorrow at uh, 12 o'clock Eastern Time calling into the Options Show because they have they have a great way of uh, ameliorating a position maybe that's not going your way and giving you time because you might be able to play on the short term a move that's going up and then you've got your longer term position and you can just hold that. Do you know, understand what I'm saying? I don't mind doing that. I do that with my subscribers often. We have a shorter term position that might be counter to the other position. So here we go. Your your biggest thing is that if it go, closes above the the doji candle of the 26, 488.56, if it closes above that, wow, there's a good sign that that what I call the repellent line, I'm going to draw it in red, and then above it I'm going to put a green line to show that if it breaks above that, if it, above, if it goes above, here we go, um, 497, I'd say be careful. It really does look like a, a leg B to the upside trying to challenge the 513.74 level because we just don't know. This is well, how, how, how important is the, uh, the 920 uh, gap area that it's pulled back to today? Would you consider that to be, if it closes above that gap area, to be a, uh, um, a negative, I mean, a positive sign? That stops I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to go with the with the with the trend of the market. You see, I have no choice but to go with the trend of the market, and that's saying to me that if the market gaps up tomorrow, you've got to be prepared that Apple, regardless right. of downside right. gaps, it's not going to even right. look at those. But right. my weekly chart is saying I think you are right. You might have to put up a little bit of heat, but I think you're right that Apple will be coming down. So. But I'm saying what I'm looking at and what you're looking at are two separate things to your bank account. Mm -hmm. I don't want, you know what I'm saying, I don't want you to not, I don't want you to be surprised. So I'm just saying to you that if there's a chance that it closes in the next two days above 488.56 mm -hmm. and it opens at around number 486, so if it goes above 486, I think it's going to retest that resistance area, and that resistance area is in the 490, low 490s. That's all I'm saying. Looking okay. out. I wouldn't be surprised, and that's the only reason why I said to you that it might be possible if you, if you, within striking distance of what you bought it at, maybe a little bit of a loss. This is the time to say, hey, I've had my opportunities; they haven't quite worked out. I want to lessen the 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 chance of of taking a bigger loss. That's all. I got you. And and if you keep your capital, you'll be in the game. You'll be able to ready to play to the next downside in Apple. I think it's coming. But I'm not, going, I'm not going to be the one to tell Apple because I just don't think it's going to listen to me. And I, I don't think it's going to listen to you. It's, on its own, it's got its own metrics. And I'm saying 492, 496, be careful. If it pulls back by Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, below 470, right. preferably 466, you've right. got a great, you're on the way. That's perfect for you. So I hope that helps right. you. Call me later in the week. Let's look at it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Thanks, it. Brian. Good luck with that. Let's go to Chris in San Antonio. Hi, Chris. How are you? Doing good, Bessel. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Hey, Bessel, I had to go to the grocery store a while ago, so I missed your opening remarks. And I just, I was just wondering, uh, where do you think the market's going right now? Well, this is the situation. I, I have to consider that those were peaks of significance in the daily charts um, at the at the previous highs, and the the spy itself has got. 173.60, and that was, in fact, a peak D. The SPX didn't. It went to a peak C, but it's got an overlapping way from the previous one. So I'm putting it together, and all I can say is that on a short-term basis, the, 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 the key metrics say that the Dow and the S&P have gone from sell signal to sell mode. That's got nothing to do with it today. There isn't a buy signal or anything. It's just saying in price... And in the technicals, the MACD and Stochastic, they've done all that they have to do to give me an indication that they should go lower. That's number one. Number two is in the, in the volatility index, which I've considered to be absolutely imperative to watch all the time. Whoops, there's the music. There was a huge gap up this morning. It went to 17.49, but it's now closer to the lows. But that gap is really significant. All you need to do is break above 17.81 in the next two days. We'll come back to this. It's a good question. I'll be back with Chris in San Antonio. We're looking at the market and saying, where are we going? Are you ready to ride the next bull market wave? Catch the Chapman wave. Using the Chapman Wave methodology, Basil's very comprehensive daily newsletter, The Opening Call, gives the short, intermediate, and long-term analysis for the key indexes. 
In his Trader's Corner, he gives a brief market summary and expectation for the day with possible trades, both long and short, which are reviewed daily. A position, subscribers sold recently for plus 42% on parts and plus 64% on rest. And Hertz Global has a core position for six months. A current position, entered as a turnaround company, is trading over 100% of its entry point as a portion sold earlier for a plus 21% gain. Subscribers to the opening call see the Chapman Wave techniques demonstrated and explained daily to also educate investors. Now you can get a free two-week trial. Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this powerful newsletter first began. And right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Gold Report by visiting TFNN.com. Make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years. Get your 30-day free trial today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We've got Chris and San Antonio online, and uh, let's just run through the numbers. I'm looking at, uh, I'll give you the parameters because I'm not going to guess as to what will happen. But if there's a Roman candle, if in other words, if, in the Dow, if the Dow closes somewhere around here, 15,158, 15,166, then that candle says at any point in the next couple of days, if there's a move, if it doesn't happen later than today, if there's a move to the 15,128, 131 area or lower, we're probably going to retest the low. And if we take out that low, there's really very little support. And the support I'd be looking at is in the weekly chart um, right there. And that is at 14, well, 15,000 is going to be absolutely key. Close below 15,000 says there's a really good chance you're going to retest the 14,800 to level sometime over the next coming weeks. Now, I'm wrong. I'm using the Dow for the moment. I'm wrong if for any 
any re I don't care what the reason is, it's not the pop-up, is if we are going to hold, and if in fact the Dow goes over 15,308, let's call it 15,315 to 15,320, into Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, then all of a sudden you're looking at something that's going to happen that says you could be at a stronger bounce, but then I'm looking at the potential for an H pattern. Everything about the market says many sectors need time, they need to time to rest, and all I can say, those are the parameters I'd be looking for. I'll just quickly give it to you on the SPY, and the SPY says a close below, the, uh, certainly a close below today's low of 167.15. It's very negative, and it gets you into the candle of um, the, the 6th of, uh, of September down to the 164.48 level. And any move in the next few days that goes above the resistance at 169.38 is very, if it holds, it's very positive, but I would still think that an H pattern is likely to unfold. I'll even draw it in right there. So my bias right now is to say this market needs time. It needs a rest. I'm looking at some stocks that we actually owned that have either held or got taken out for a little bit of a profit or maybe a small loss this morning that have actually bounced. But a lot of what I'm looking at says probably we're going to need time to consolidate if it's not priced. So I hope that helps you. Well, there is just as well. I'm long SPY right now, and I think it's probably time to to go ahead and close the trade. But well, let me. Okay, if you are you long from today this morning? No, I've been long for a long time. Oh, okay. Uh, so but, uh, you know, I'm, you know what I'm going to suggest? To in, a, in a trade that is not making any money. Oh, okay. Then I, you can look at this. You can take your money and then look at it as a refresh. Maybe tomorrow you can start. You know what I'm saying? So don't rush. Just think about it. You've got another hour or two while the market's up in this area. Just plan it carefully. Don't be upset if whatever you do works the other way tomorrow, but just plan it carefully. Thanks for calling, okay. Chris. Thanks a lot, Basil. Thank you very much. Let's go to Bill in Portland. We've just got time for Bill before we go to Larry Pizzavento. Hi, Bill. What are you looking at? I'm looking at FAX, uh, a kind of, uh, FAX. It's an Australian bond fund, Australia Plus. I know it bond. very well. My, my, the groom at my wedding, uh, at our wedding back in South Africa, I started the fund back in Australia. Oh, is that uh, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, but then he, what sold, you think he, of sold, it. he actually sold it to uh, the Aberdeen Fund. Yeah. Right. I was wondering what you're thinking of, about it uh, is for a long-term uh, small bond holding uh, just to diversify bonds. It, it trades so wildly like a stock. You know, it's more related to the dollar. It used to be related to the dollar. In fact, I used to have it in my newsletter as an inverse trade to the dollar. Now it's got its own kind of uh, a way of looking at things. I've been looking at the TIP, the tip. I've been looking at, I'm trying to find the name. You know what I'm going to suggest? Mm -hmm. Don't do anything right now. If you, are you in it or not? I'm in on a small position. I've, just, I've held it a, a small profit. Okay. Uh, but, do me a favor. We're going to run out of time. If you're in with a small position, can you call me tomorrow if you have a chance? Let's look at it again tomorrow, and I'll, I'll see what, what matches up with it. Okay? Thank you, Basil. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for calling. I appreciate it. Bill will call tomorrow from Portland, Oregon. Stay tuned for Larry Pesavento, and I'll see you tomorrow. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.